You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome to episode 65 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Welcome, listeners. I'm your regular host, Sean, and with me today is... Tracy. And do you realize that you got a promotion this past week? I did. Yes. Did? Yes. Yes. You're now a co-administrator administrator right. on the Soulforge Facebook page, mm-hmm. which all our listeners should be following. Oh, I'm sure they all are. Yes. And I... if they're not, they will be now. Yes, exactly. They'll go to Facebook and follow the Soulforge podcast. Because we share a lot of uh, positivity memes. Mm-hmm, we, sh- sure. we share fun stuff. Absolutely. Irreverent humor. Uh-huh. Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, and because uh, I figured, you know what, I, I need help doing the page, <laughs> and, and you have a lot of people that you know, and whenever you share stuff, we get more reach. Global right. domination is the goal, so <laughs> we'll start small, we'll start slow. You didn't tell me that when you asked me to be an administrator. Surprise! <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, so... Uh, Today we're actually recording at your house again, mm-hmm. which is my temporary recording studio yeah. at times. Yeah. Uh, today is my birthday. Yay, happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, so today, as we're recording, it's September 3rd, 2018. I turned 42 at 12.34 mm-hmm. p.m. Yeah. I'm not quite sure I've got all the information <laughs> from the universe and everything. Yeah, there was no like magical transformation that I noticed. Me neither. I didn't feel anything. No. Maybe it happens over the day. Maybe. Maybe by the end of this 24 hours of September 3rd, that you'll know everything. Could very well be. You'll have all the answers. Yes. And we could very well do a podcast all about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but Paul and I actually did that for episode 42. Oh. So we don't have okay. to do that today. Right. It's just I turned 42 today. Right. Uh, today's episode 65 And what are we talking about? Other people's kids. We're going to talk about other people's kids. That's Uh right, exactly. (laughs) Uh, How how we uh, build relationships with them, how they Mm -hmm. react to us. Yeah. Uh, So when basically not just other people's kids, like the people that you're dating. Right. Yes. Like being almost like a step parent or in that role. Right. Yeah. Whether you're married or not, you you become that parental Mm -hmm. figure. Yeah. Or step-parent figure or yeah. whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's a topic that's wide open. Yeah. And um, I have a lot of experience with. I have uh, only one, my current uh, stepson experience, yes. but I do have that experience and things I can share. So, Well, let's talk about that first. Okay, sure. So you married your husband uh, this past December. Yep. So about eight months ago-ish. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you've got a six-year-old stepson. Yeah. And yeah. how is that experience? Um, not as I thought it would be. How so? Uh, growing up and even as a younger adult, you hear about how hard it is to have a blended family and uh, kids not getting along with step-parents and things like that. And I always kind of didn't understand why. Why why doesn't everybody just get along? Like, you just love that child like you love your own child. What's the what's the big deal? If why it, is it so hard? If it worked for the Brady Bunch, why can't it work in real life? Right, exactly. That's how I live my life. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like the Brady Bunch. Right. Um, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Right. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha! Uh, just call me Marsha from now on. Okay. 
It was really, it was, I really have had a great experience. I have to be honest. Like, it's been great. It has been great. Um, my stepson was just before he turned two before, when I met him. So he's was quite young. He doesn't really remember anything a time before, before me. Right. Uh, and he even, when we were talking about his birth at one point, mentioned that I was there. And so I had to explain to him, no, I didn't meet you until later in life. But it's been a good experience overall. However, I do notice myself treating him a little bit differently in certain situations. Than your own children. Right. And it's very subconsciously. I don't actively make that decision. But then once I've done it or said it, then I'm like... Hey, wait a second. Would I have done that if that were my kid? Or do you treat him more or less strict, or just different somehow? I think probably a little bit more strict. I'm not, it's hard to say because I have. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast before. I have an awful, awful memory. So whereas things, you know, how you said you were born at twelve thirty four, I don't know what time my kids were born, and uh, like I. And not because I don't love them. I just don't remember. And is, I don't... Isn't it written down somewhere? I don't know. Because I, I, I only know because it was written down somewhere. And yeah. my mom showed me the paper, which I don't know where that is. But Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But, so I don't remember exactly how strict I was with each child and, and things like that. And I know I was kind of on the strict side, but now I wonder... So it makes it just makes you think, like, am I being too strict with them? Am I more strict than one with my own kids? And so things like that. And it just... It is a lot more complicated than one would think. It just seems to be like, well, why can't everybody just get along? And, and they just, like that. It's, no, because real life is a lot different from TV. Yeah. So I have that experience with my stepson, and then there's also the experience I have with my husband and my kids, who are much older. Yes. So now they are 12, 16, and uh, my daughter's 20, almost 21, but we met over four years ago so they're a lot older than two they you know all very well remember their dad and I being together and what happened when we separated and so that's a very different situation of course not only that it's I think it's easier for a woman to bond with children than a man to bond with somebody else's children I believe that yeah yes okay and plus two of my children are girls so that even more makes it difficult two of the three of your children are girls yeah right so so it's that's been an interesting situation my husband isn't very close to any of the kids okay um because they were also older at the time right and they had their dad and Mm -hmm. who's this guy coming in and Mm -hmm. right exactly yeah it wasn't great at first with with especially the oldest two the younger one was kind of too young and and that but uh yeah, so it's been it's been interesting trying to watch that relationship develop, change and develop. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah, I wouldn't say at this point it's a real close relationship or anything, but especially with my youngest, um, she's now a lot more open to him and teases him and oh, that's good. has fun with him and stuff like that. But so it took a while. It did take a while, quite a while. And, and that's the youngest one. Mm-hmm. So the older two. Yeah, I'm not sure if it'll ever really be that stepdad type relationship. It's more my mom's husband. Yep, makes sense. Which is different. It is. Because, Same but different. Because uh, my mom's last relationship, mm-hmm. uh, when they got together, I was 19. Yeah. So, but my youngest brother was 9. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they, they were way closer. Mm-hmm. I was already way at school. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that kind of close bond with them right. as they did, yeah. as the younger two did. So, mm-hmm. especially the youngest. Yeah, yeah for so, sure. So a lot about age. Yeah, I agree. And gender with the parent and the child, I think, does play a role as well. I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you've had some experiences. I have had multiple experiences okay. with other people's children. Other people's kids. Yeah. Before I get into that, let's play a promo for another podcast on the ESO Network. Perfect. Hey gang, are you looking for another podcast to listen to? Well, you're in luck. The Nerdy Laser is a podcast, and we specialize in 90s nerd culture. But we don't leave anything out. If something is cool and nerdy, we will talk about it. So join myself, Richard Yule, and a variety of guests 
on the Nerdy Laser Podcast, available on iTunes, Podbean, and the ESO Network. And that's a great podcast. Now let's get back to other people's kids. Okay. All let's right. Do it. So I have had some experience with other people's kids. Mm-hmm. Um, Where are you going to start? Let's start at the beginning. Okay. Because I'll go in chronological order because it's easier for me to remember that way. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, when I was 25 or 26 years old, mm-hmm. I had decided I'm at the quarter life. Uh, quarter century life <laughs> yeah. point I need to start a family uh, mm. and then I met Lynn and she already had two kids Yeah, uh, I can't remember their ages exactly but the boy was like 10 or 12 and the girl was like 6 or something when you were 25 when I was 25 okay because yeah, she was 4 years older than me okay so she was yeah 29 I was 25 or whatever it was mm-hmm. roughly and she couldn't have any more kids so, okay so I, I thought about it a long time mm-hmm. and did I want to get involved with this woman? If I couldn't have any more kids with her, mm-hmm. you know, and we were going to be together forever because mm-hmm. I was 25 and naive and <laughs> I didn't know how life was going to work out. Right. Uh, so I called my stepdad. Okay. And because uh, he had no kids of his own and my mom already had the three of us. Right. And she couldn't have any more. So I talked to him for a long time and I said, mm-hmm. I've met this woman and I like her a lot. Mm-hmm. She can't have any more kids. Do you regret not having kids? Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know what? I've got you three boys. Right. I never thought I was going to have kids of my own anyway. So, so it worked out for him. So it worked out for him. Okay. It was all good. And so I'm like, okay, I could see that. Yeah. So I proceeded with the relationship. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, the kids were bad. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. Okay. Like Bad like not listening, bad like causing trouble. Causing trouble, not listening, just okay. being weird. Like the boy would uh, stand in like a doorway. Okay. And climb it up like a spider. Okay. He would, uh, not bad, just weird. Mm-hmm. Um, the girl would take her clothes, dump them out into the bathtub just because. Whoa. And make messes and not listen. Mm-hmm. And, and this is going back 15 years, so it's hard to remember. Right. Because I've, I, oh, they would go into the basement, into my collectible totes, and oh. open up the packages. <gasps> And oh, they, that's not cool. Were, that's my stuff. Mm-hmm. My collectibles. You don't touch that. And they knew, but they did anyway. But they're kids. They were kids. <laughs> yeah. So... I think what it was is, at that age, I wasn't really ready for a ready-made family, even though I thought I might be. Yeah. So. Yeah. That that relationship didn't last very long. It lasted about a year and a half. Okay. So, then I was single for a bit, and then I met Trish, mm-hmm. and she had an eight-year-old daughter. Right. And she was a pretty good kid. The okay. only The only thing that was annoying about uh, Dakota was that uh, she had a messy bedroom. Okay. And when she would have a bath, she would lay down, put her ears under the water, and sing at the top of her lungs. <laughs> so, so not bad. Not just, too bad. No. Just funny, annoying. Yeah. And hilarious yeah. all at the same time. A lot funnier now that she's older. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so she was a good kid. Right. And then uh, Trish and I proceeded with our relationship when mm-hmm. we had Bishop, mm-hmm. and that was all good. And, okay. And that relationship lasted almost nine years. Oh, okay. Uh, and then after that, uh, I. Got with Bridget, yeah, who already had three kids of her own. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and the two oldest ones were boys, and the youngest one was, uh, I think, a three-year-old at that point. The, okay. the daughter was, yeah. Uh, and I never got close to the boys. Mm-hmm. It was it was difficult because they were older. Yeah, and they had their own fathers. They'd been so through so much with Bridget that they didn't really care for some new guy, right? Okay. So, and then the daughter would test me. Oh. Yeah, because... In what way? Well, uh, I would tell her not to do something, mm-hmm. but then she would go and immediately do it. Oh, yeah. see what was going to happen. Right. And she was only three or four. Wow. But that lasted for a full year. Okay. So... Her own way of the adjustment period, I guess? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, and so with the, with the boys, uh, we would play video games and stuff, but they pretty much kept to themselves. Okay. And so there were no, like, issues with not relationships. It just... You, you never got close. It was just, like... It was, it was not easy because okay. they'd been through so many things and I didn't really know how to get close to them. Mm-hmm. Now, how was their relationship with your mom, their yeah. mom, excuse me, and how did that affect your relationship with them and with her? Oh, uh, they were super close to their mom. Okay. Yeah. Did they, like, were they well behaved and did, you know? Uh, they were mostly well behaved. Okay. Yeah. 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 As expected, I guess, right? Yeah. They, messy rooms. And they didn't mm-hmm. want to clean up, but what kid does? Mm-hmm. So just typical stuff. Okay. Um, 
they, they weren't swearing or fighting or stealing or any of that stuff. They weren't going into my collectibles. So <laughs> okay. that, that was okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was no real problem. It was just we weren't close. Right. And uh, the, the daughter tested me and, and stuff. And mm-hmm. sometimes she would be all sweet and, you know, cuddly and stuff. But most of the time she would just, yeah. just do things to spite me, just, just to <laughs> test me. So okay. it didn't really make me angry. It was just like... I know what you're doing and it's annoying. Just stop, yeah. you know? Uh-huh. So that was fine. Uh, and then that relationship ended as all my relationships do. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, I just, I dated some random people for short amounts of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I dated a girl named Chantel for a few mm-hmm. months and she had three daughters. Oh, okay. And wow. Yeah. And uh, they, they were good kids. They liked me. They liked when I came over. So I had no trouble with that. Were they younger? Uh, I think the youngest one maybe was either six or eight, and the oldest one was like 13. Okay. So that was fine. We, yeah. wa- we watched cartoons and stuff yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then Terry's daughter was mm-hmm. six years old. Uh, she loved me. Okay. But she was a handful. Yeah. Oh, boy. In what way? Uh, she wouldn't listen. There was probably a, a good foot or two of mess in her bedroom. Oh. At all times. Okay. You know, but she wasn't a bad kid. She was hyper, mm-hmm. but she was okay. She was sweet, just just messy. Okay. But I, I don't remember having any issues with her in particular, so that was fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, I got with Cheryl. Yep. And her daughter just turned nine yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I uh, so t- that's now the beginning of September. I moved in with her at the beginning of November last year, mm-hmm. uh, and that kid doesn't like me at all. Oh. Yeah. How does she display that? Um, or how do you how do I know? receive that? Yeah, uh, I don't like it. But uh, <laughs> what, what it is, is um, she had a playroom mm-hmm. where all her toys were set up. And she could play it whatever time she wanted to, when it was how she wanted. But then I moved in, mm-hmm. and there wasn't enough room for all the stuff I had. So I had to take over half the playroom. Oh. And so I put my computer in there for my podcasting. Right. And Yeesh. so she doesn't go into her playroom anymore, even though it's still stuffed with toys. But she's resentful. Right. And she is also resentful that I've taken her mom away from her. Mm-hmm. Because they were mm-hmm. always together. Because mm-hmm. Cheryl hadn't been with anybody for a few years after yeah. she broke up with the kid's dad, right? Yeah. So there, here I come. Yeah. Taking over her space. You're like the enemy. I'm the enemy taking over her mom. Right. You know, so she uh, she doesn't really do anything bad other than just ignore me a lot. Mm, okay. And, and give me looks. And uh, when, when I talk to her, she won't answer. So you don't have conversations. I try. And, and sometimes when she lets her guard down and forgets that she hates me, it's okay. <laughs> and we can watch some TV together and whatever. Okay. But then she remembers, oh yeah, I don't like this guy. Right. And then it, you know. So, and, and I always th- find, though, getting into a relationship with somebody, it's easier for me mm-hmm. to bond with the daughters yeah. than it is with the sons. Oh, okay. And the reason for that is because uh, the, the boys think they're the men of the house. Oh, I see. Or they're really close to their dad. And here comes this guy. Right. He's trying to take over my role now. Right. Be the man of the house. Be hmm. with my mom. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and even when I was a kid. And I had a stepdad, my brother Robin's kid, dad. Yeah. I was seven, and I, that was the tattoo guy. Yeah. Okay. Canon. Canon, yes, right. exactly. So you have a good memory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, at first I thought he was the coolest guy ever. Mm-hmm. But then he moved in. Okay. And he was mean. And he'd, uh, he'd sit and make things out of leather for the strippers or right. for the bikers <laughs> or yeah. whatever. And uh, he'd, he'd smoke cigarettes constantly. Mm-hmm. And there could be a mess everywhere. And, and your mom's coming home in 10 minutes. Clean up this mess. But it was his mess oh. that he wanted us to clean up. Oh. So I grew to resent him. Right. Because I didn't want to do his stuff. So your initial idea of a step parent wasn't, I mean, initially, initially when they met, but as a child, it yeah. was not positive. No, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I think it's easier for me to bond with the daughters of my okay. girlfriends than it is with the sons because I can see from the son's perspective. Right. Here's this guy. That makes sense. Taking over my life. Yeah. I don't like this at all. And it also depends on the age. Mm-hmm. Like if, uh, if the kid was like one or two or three, mm-hmm. it'd be fine because then I'd always be there. But right. Once they hit like seven or eight or 10, 
mm-hmm. then the resentments come in. Yeah. Most of the time, when it comes to a daughter, it, they're okay. They don't mind, except for Bridget's daughter and Cheryl's daughter. <laughs> so, <laughs> but 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 Dakota and I, uh, Trisha's daughter, mm-hmm. we, we got along great. Mm-hmm. So. Do you we, still get along? Yeah, we still do. Good. So. Good. Yeah. Hmm. It's so interesting to actually be in that situation, and. I mean, you have the perspective from the child mm-hmm. having a step parent, and then also being in a relationship with a woman who has children. Exactly, so your perspective is interesting. And, and the thing is, ever since Lynn and everybody after her, they've all had kids. Oh, okay. because it's very rare at this age now, yeah. and even mid twenties and up. Mm-hmm. Most, most girls have kids. have kids by that age. Yeah. So it's very rare yeah. when they don't. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember when I was first single uh, there were men who when they found out I had three kids and my oldest I think at the time was about 15 that they didn't want to have anything to do with me anymore and we can't blame them and that's a lot of responsibility Mm and when you're meeting someone I wasn't meeting people just to have short relationships they thought you know eventually hopefully this turns into something great uh, and long lasting and I don't want to, I wouldn't want to have dated somebody that didn't want to deal with that because obviously kids come first. It's a package deal. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. And exactly. And being with Lynn, Mm -hmm. even though her kids were the worst of all the bunch, Mm -hmm. but that was the first step type family that I was involved with because before that it was, it was college and stuff and they didn't have kids. Yeah. So that was like, wow. Okay. So that was like the, uh, the starter package, I guess, <laughs> the trial by fire or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Okay. So these are some really bad, awful kids and I wish I had a better memory of what it was, but that's, mm-hmm. that's all. Do you, I, I think you mentioned it quickly, but do you think that your age at the time had a lot to do with it? Uh, yeah, I was probably more intolerant because, you know, I was 25, 26. Yeah. And I'm sure I was I thinking I was ready to settle down but it was overwhelming. And these kids were all over my stuff, touching things. Mm-hmm. Like, I had my space before, right? Yeah. And then my things are being touched. Yeah. What the heck? Okay. So. so then after you had Bishop, do you think your tolerance level was different? I think so. Yeah. Because, well, that was my kid, right? Yeah. So I could, I could train him the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And he, knew, he knew not to touch my stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and the funny thing is later I found out he would touch my things, but he was super careful and he would put the thing back into the dust hole. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yes. That's he's, he's, he's a clever little guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. So but what I meant, though, was do you think that having a child of your own made you more tolerant of other people's kids? Oh, more than likely. Yeah. I would think so. Mm-hmm. Because once you have the experience yourself, right. and it's, it's your flesh and blood, yeah. you can uh, be more empathetic towards other people's kids. For sure. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think so, too. But. Yeah, it still is so tricky. There are so many things that can cause issues. Um, You know, one thing that my husband and I argue about is how much time on the iPad that my stepson has. Or when my daughter's giving me attitude and then how his reaction is to that. Oh, I understand. mm -hmm. Yeah, because, uh, for example, uh, Cheryl's daughter Mm -hmm. uh, talks back to her mother in such a way... That if I had talked to my mom like that, I would have had a wooden spoon broken over my head or my ass. Mm-hmm. And mm. Cheryl has decided to choose her battles and ignore some of it. But my anxiety and my blood pressure go up. Mm-hmm. And I get mad at the kid. And I want to yell at her and say, you don't talk to your mother like that. Right. But Cheryl's choosing to ignore certain aspects of that. And mm-hmm. so it's not my place. Right? Mm-hmm. So people have different ways of raising their kids. Yeah. So... For sure, it it definitely makes things hard. You know, even things as far as bedtimes and how they, you know, what how you're gonna react when they're not eating their supper or how much time you're gonna make them spend outside and just there's so many things involved in parenting, and I find it different with somebody that's not the, I don't know maybe people that are. Uh, by lo- both biological parents of children have these issues too, but I didn't as much as now that I'm with somebody else with with a child right because yeah. you and your first husband had the kids together mm-hmm. so you could raise them together 
in your style that you would develop together mm -hmm. because it was right from the beginning. Right. And so you could mold it that way. Right. But here comes your husband with his his child that you didn't help raise, and he was raising the son with his mm -hmm. ex-wife? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they were married? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so they had their own style, mm -hmm. and now you guys are together, and it's different styles, Yeah. and you have to go that way. And so. I, I, I do sympathize with him to come into a relationship with a, an, an older woman with three kids, one of them being a teenage girl. That, that can't be easy. No, I bet it's not. For a, a, he, when we met, he was 29, so. Right, yeah. yes, because he's seven years younger than you. Yeah. Right, that's true. So yeah. there's even a bit of the, the age gap right. generation. Right. Not a lot, because technology and stuff, and we were all raised now, but mm -hmm. still, there's a, there's a difference. Yeah, seven seven years is. is a good amount. Yeah. So. Yeah, it definitely, it, it's definitely come up. <laughs> I bet it has. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So in conclusion, mm -hmm. other people's kids are quite a topic. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of it has to do with communication and tolerance yes. and understanding and yes. uh, figuring it all out together and trying not to freak out. Yeah. I think a, a good tip would be for parents, any parents, whether it's other people's kids or your own, is to have those conversations before issues arise because if something happens in the heat of the moment and then you haven't discussed how you want to deal with things that's when you know feelings may be hurt and, and things like that and you have to uh what is it called you have to present a united front in front mm -hmm. of the kid yes so that they don't sure. see sure. that you're arguing and then they drive a wedge between you guys right so that's For important sure. to remember too yeah you know what, Sean? Tell me. I think that uh, whoever is listening, if they've had some experiences, that they should share with us on the Facebook page. They should. Yeah. Yes, they can definitely share it uh, by going to facebook.com slash soulforgepodcast. They could tweet at us. Okay, great. At, at soulforgepod, or they could email us, soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Fantastic. I want to hear some stories. Me too. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's our episode for this week. Thanks again for being my co-host. Thank you. Listeners, thanks for coming by and listening to our stories. If you have anything to share, please do. And remember, don't let someone dim your light simply because it is shining in their eyes. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Contact the show by emailing soulforgepodcast at gmail.com or by tweeting soulforgepod on Twitter. Visit us at soulforgepodcast.com and remember the best way to show your support is by leaving a five-star review in the iTunes store. And if you would, please check us out and like us on Facebook. The Soul Forge Podcast was written, produced, scored, edited, engineered, and directed by Sean Vanderloo. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. For more great content, you can listen to my other podcast, The Rusted Robot. Thanks for stopping by The Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. I could do this all day. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.